Hello and welcome to another edition of Sadler's TV. We're here at the home of Warsaw Football Club, the Banksy Stadium, and have two very special guests with me once more. Milan Laukovic and Andy Taylor, the two players at the table for tonight's show. Um, lots to get through, lads. If I could start with, with you, Tails. I mean, yep. fantastic start to the season. 12 games in, um, top of the division. It must be a good place to come and work at the moment. Yeah, it is. I mean, obviously, the, the place is buzzing at the moment. Um, like I say, it's been a terrific start. Um, not just results, but but more performance-wise. You know, I mean, I can only probably think of one or two games where we didn't really, really deserve the win. Um, so performances were really happy. Uh, results are obviously following. Um, and like you said, top of the table. You know, everyone's really happy at the moment. Mm. What did you make of that Burton game? Lots of pre-match hype, first versus second. Jimmy yeah. Floyd Hasselbank in the dugout's always a, a big name to come to the banks. But what did you make of the game, first of all? Because first half, we seemed to get the better of him and got that crucial goal. Yeah, no, it was, it was a tough game and it, it was always going to be a tough game. Um, they were top, they're top of the table before the game for, for a good reason. Um, and apart from that, every game in this league is a tough game. So we knew it was going to be a tough game going into it. But we, like you say, we started really, really well. First half, we got right on top of them. Um, controlled the game really, really well. Um, very well organised. And like you say, got the goal, which we thoroughly deserved. And then we're going 1-0 at half-time. Second half, they came out and had a reaction, which we'd expect them to do. But I thought we dealt with it quite well. Um, and then obviously got the breakaway goal at the end which obviously sealed it I've got a smile on my face I'm thinking back to Kinsey's celebration he's yeah. piling into the tower choice yeah. we've seen someone else do that haven't we uh, thank you <laughs> but good to see him get on the score sheet as well first senior goal yeah brilliant I mean obviously he's, he's a young lad sort of coming into the team and mm. and he's, his performance deserved it because I thought he was brilliant mm. um, obviously getting the goal is, is, a, is a massive bonus but I think he, him along with so many other the young players this year have really sort of come to the forefront Um and sort of stepped up when when they've come into the team, you know, done fantastically well, and the whole squad's firing, and that's why we're doing so well for me because the whole squad is really, really firing. Whoever comes in, does the job and does well, and then it's obviously difficult, obviously for the gaffer to sort of pick and choose teams because everybody's sort of firing really well, and it is a squad game over the season. You know, there's going to be sort of twenty, twenty-five oh. players that are used, and if we are going to be successful, um, we've got to continue the way we're going where the squad is performing. Yeah. Down the other end of the pitch, though, six goals conceded in 12 games. Phenomenal record. It's something you must mm. be extremely proud of. As a yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean, obviously, as a defender, you, you first and your first job is to keep the ball out of mm. the net um, and to defend. And then, obviously, if you can go forward and join in and, and help build attacks, that's a bonus. But it is something we pride ourselves on, not just as a back four, but as a team, uh, being very, very organised and well-drilled and everyone sort of knows the jobs. Mm. Um, so... I mean, it was similar to last year. We got quite a few plaudits last year for the amount of clean sheets we were keeping. And, and I said then, you know, we, we take the plaudits on board and obviously we're really happy with it, but we take them on as a team. Um, you know, because we defend from the front, we pride ourselves on that. Same way that we take the attacking plaudits on as a team. We do everything as a team. So it's brilliant that we've got the record of, of six conceded in 12. And it's obviously it's something we want to sort of maintain as much as we can. Um but it's not just something that sort of the back four lads are patting themselves on the back <laughs> yeah. and the goal is patting himself. It, it, yeah. It's as a team, you know, the, the midfield four work so hard in front of us and, and beyond them, the strikers work really hard as well to, to not let them sort of build the tax comfortably. Mm. Milan, Tells talks about that team responsibility. You were here a couple of seasons ago as well. What's changed upon your return in the summer? I think um, we spoke about this before that um, obviously players matured, they have another year and a half also in the, in their legs, you know. Um, um, they didn't start last season really well, obviously, so maybe that helped as well, you know. So this season we start really well. And, um, yeah, I think uh, just um, the quality went up again. Obviously, uh, they brought in Jace, uh, who is a good player, and uh, it was a shame that Richard Donald left, but uh, Edis came in and, as as you said, six goals in... Uh, in 12 well, games, if 12 yeah. games uh, it's 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 fantastic. So uh, uh, we just need to keep going and uh, take each game as it comes. Do you know what I mean? Step by mm -hmm. step, and if we're there, end of the end of the year, then fantastic. The end last the edition, the, the last edition of, of Sadler's TV, we spoke about the academy and how it's a thriving place for young footballers to come and play their football. Just how good are this young crop of players that we're seeing break into the first team at the minute? You look through the the squad, nine players to come mm. through. Our academy. You train with them day in day out. Just how good can they be, and are they? I think it's it's really good. Like first time when I came there, well, I was only twenty years old, and it was uh, Kieran Reese, um, obviously Matt Preston, mm -hmm. uh, 
Kins towards the end uh, and Ama. But uh, who was here? Grief, I think, mm -hmm. and uh, all the, some of the players left already. Mm -hmm. But it was them training with us. And uh, as I said, they matured now. They get the chance, you know. Uh, Kieran went on couple loans, uh, Flan as well, Matt Preston. Mm -hmm. So they grow grown up boys now. And obviously, he took the chance when they played. Then uh, I think, uh, as Tail said, and you too, uh, we have a good squad. And it's a squad uh, that is going to get you promoted because um, it, it's a lot to play 46 games with the same 11, do you know what I mean? And it's uh, Tuesday, Saturday, so people need to rest in that as well. But, but the young players are making an impact. You look at, at the game against Burton, you uh, tell us already said Jason missing, yeah. uh, Neil Effery's missing, Craig McGillivray, you forget, only just turned 21-22. Yeah. And then Kins pops up. The young players are making an impact this season. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's good for them, obviously, working hard in training. Mm -hmm. You give yourself a chance uh, that Gaff is going to pick you, you know, and uh, Kins waited long. Um, he played, I think, uh, one game against Morecambe mm -hmm. when we lost, unfortunately, mm -hmm. but he still did well there. <coughs> and uh, now he got his chance, caught straight away. Mm -hmm. um, so, really good for him. Got in a team of the week with this guy here too. <laughs> uh, tell us, how much of the senior players thriving, watching these young players come through? Yourself, Skipper, Jim O'Connor, how enjoyable is it to see these young boys start performing? Well, I mean, for me personally, because I've, I've sort of been at the club for... This is my fourth season now, mm. so like like Milan said, I saw them when they first sort of stepped up and started mm. training with us, and, and they come to you as sort of obviously well kids really, yeah. um, and the way that the majority of them have sort of taken everything on board and sort of learned and progressed over the last couple of years is brilliant. And now you see them sort of stepping into the first team, and, and they're not just stepping in to sort of make up the numbers, which has happened in the past yeah. and happens at other clubs. They're stepping in there. And they're there on merit, you know, and and they're putting in performances like like Kins, like Rico uh, have been doing, and and they're there on merit, and and as a senior player, it sort of it keeps you on your toes as well because you know you. Well, that was going to be my next question, you know. So yeah, you're always looking over, <laughs> you're always looking over your shoulder because you know there's there's these young legs chomping yeah. at the bit for your. And position. that's that's the way if you're going to be a successful team that, or squad, that's what has to happen yeah. because if there's no competition for places, but you know players sort of get comfortable and. Whereas if you've got, like you say, somebody, a young lad sort of coming through and sort of breathing down your neck, you, you've got to sort of stay on your game and, and, and make sure you're doing your job week in, week out because it's a ruthless game as people and it's a ruthless business as people ready to sort of take your place. So, But like I say, it's a he it is a healthy thing for the mm. squad because it, and if you're going to be successful, it has to be that way because, um, like I say, when, when if there's injuries or suspensions or whatever as we get into the season... We all know that there's, there's lads that can step in and not just do a job that can sort of thrive and, and help the team. So it's 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 really really healthy at the minute. Is that the key, Tails? The fact that not only do we have you know, players on the bench um, ready to come on, but the quality and yeah. depth that we've got this season that we perhaps lacked in previous seasons. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you probably bang on there. To be fair, I mean, in seasons gone past, um, you know, when we've been sort of in games and we're sort of struggling to break the opposition down, and mm. and you sort of look at the bench and. And no disrespect to, to the lads that were there, and you sort of look at the bench, and, and there's not really m many options to sort of change it. Whereas now you look at you look at the bench now, and it's always mm -hmm. it's a strong strong bench, and there's several sort of options that that the gaffer can choose to sort of try and change a game. And, and he says all the time, to be fair, in his team talks, it's not the it's not the starting eleven that win the game, it's mm. the it's the eighteen mm. because you know subs are going to come on, subs are, and and like I say, more often than not this season. The subs that have come on have made an impact, mm. and that's what you want. If you're if you're a player starting and you're sort of 75 minutes into a game and things might not be going your yeah. way, or even if they are, but you're getting a little bit tired, your subs come on. You want them to have an impact yeah. and sort of go and take the game to the opposition again and give you a fresh sort of impetus. Mm. And that's what they've been doing, yeah. and that's why for me we're doing well at the minute. Milan, lots have been made of different systems, formations that the gaffers used um, this season, but the players seem to have adapted to it really well. Certainly since the start, the first game against Oldham, where I think the gaffer came out afterwards and just said it's going to take time, but we will learn and get better at it, and it seems that's been the case so far. Yeah, I mean, 4-3-3 uh, three, three or 3-5-2, three, you have different personnel who can play these uh, formations and uh, we're mixing it up as well. And, uh, you know, that, as I said, we can hurt the, the opposition with that system or with that one, or change into that one if it's, uh, that one not working during the game. Um, so yeah, I think I think it, it worked. Do you mm. know what I mean? The plan worked. And so we, we have plan A and plan B. Yeah, and we look more threatening regardless of what formation. I'm just looking here, five more wins than we did at, at this stage last year. Seven more goals as the same stage of last season. And the goals are coming from all areas of the pitch at the moment. Yeah, nice. I mean. Um, 
we scored how many did we score from set pieces one <laughs> well yeah that's yeah true. but uh, you know if we add that as well um, obviously if we if we don't then we keep do- going like this mm-hmm. then fantastic but uh, maybe if we add a few goals from set pieces then uh, it will be even better but um, yeah I mean what, what can I say we are all enjoying it mm-hmm. and um, uh, Tail said you keeps you on your toes you know well, if you need a breather you can have it so um, that, that's how it works and exactly players on the wing like me especially sometimes 75 minutes I'm done we're going to take a short break here on Sadler's TV. Join us in a few moments' time when the boys will take some questions from you, the supporters. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Sadler's TV. Milan Lalkovic and Andy Taylor, my two guests on tonight's show. You can, of course, join the debate on Twitter at WFC Official. Use the hashtag Sadler's TV to, uh, to get involved. Um, before we come on to the fans' questions, there's quite a few here for us to get through, but I just want to talk about our opponents this season. Just one defeat blotches our record. A couple of draws in there as well. Is there anyone that we've came across that you'd fancy to be up there challenging in the uh, end of the season? I think you'd probably look at Wigan um, and say that you know, you'd know you expect them to be up there. The, the fact that they've you know were in the Premier League sort of three years ago, I think it was, and... Mm-hmm. Even though they've they've not started particularly well, um, they've had a lot of sort of turnarounds. So I think it was twenty one players out, twenty three in something like that. Mm-hmm. So obviously it may take them time to sort of gel and, and sort of start kicking on. But you would expect to see them up there at the end of the season. Mm-hmm. Um, bar them, for me it's an open league this year. Mm-hmm. I mean, who would have ever thought that Burton v, v also well, would have been a top of the yeah. team? You know, with with Berry and Rochdale hot on the heels, yeah. it, it's it's a wide open league. Um, so it's just about for us just trying to sort of keep consistent, keep doing the right thing, keep picking up the results, and you know hopefully come the end of the season we'll, we'll be in there yeah. in the mix. You were part of that Sheffield United side that reached the player final in 2012. We won't. I'm not no, even no. going to come. <laughs> up, but but my question really is, what does it take to be successful in this division to maintain it through you know August to May time? For me, I mean we've already touched on it. For me, the most important thing is the squad mm. because in League League One it's it's a brutal fixture list you know and there's sort of 46 games in cup competitions, cup well competitions well, yeah. and the squads are only quite small as yeah. well so and injuries suspensions all, all this stuff so I mean, like I said I don't know what the average is but you're going to use sort of 25 players something yeah. like that throughout the season and for me all those 25 players have got to be at it and got mm. to be you know doing their job basically and, and and that's what we've been doing so far and that, that has to continue because if you know, if people come in and they're not quite at it and it sort of ends up costing you points and, and performances, then that's when you sort of fall away because it's a long old season. Um, so for me, the, the main thing f- is the squad. Um, and like I say, at the minute, it's very healthy. So hopefully that can continue. Do you think people outside of, of league football and of League One realise some of the quality in both players and teams that are in this division? Probably not. I mean, over the last sort of probably four or five years, the quality for me in the league has gone up and up and up. And whether it's whether it's because players are sort of filtering down, so you've got players in League One that you shouldn't yeah. could be playing Championship football and vice, you know, players in not league. getting a chance higher. Yeah, exactly league. because of for whatever reason. Um, but like you say, some of the football played in League One it is terrific um, and could quite easily go and be played in the Championship. Um, so yeah, I don't, you know, obviously. People have their own opinions, but in my opinion, the last sort of four or five years, the quality has really sort of stepped up. Mm. Milan pundits are saying that League One perhaps isn't as strong as it has been in previous seasons. You were part of a Barnsley side last year that didn't do too badly either. Would you go along with that? Is League One a, a competitive division this year? I think it is. Um, many people from my country don't rate it mm. um, because obviously it's a third tire yeah. in the English division. But compared to other third tires, you know, in uh, other countries, I think this is. Uh, you can't even compare. Mm-hmm. You have fans. You have uh, obviously the players on the good wages. You know, so uh, I, I think it is. And um, you have a lot of good teams in this league that, as they have said, play really good football. So um, yeah, I think it's really competitive. Will the real test come our way when perhaps results don't go our way? Maybe one or two defeats, a, a couple of frustrating. Um, games is that when a real test of character comes in? Well, hopefully it doesn't happen, oh. but it probably will. You never know. Uh, but if it does, then we go again. We have to just stick together and uh, go another game. You know, like 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 here, we should have won against Bury. Everybody thought that after the game, but uh, we we reacted and we won the next game. Mm. And um, that's what that that's what you just have to do. Work hard and uh, you know. Uh, 
make up make up for, for what you what you missed. But the fact that we are top of the league at the moment means we're there to be shut out. Teams will be looking at us in preparation mm. for games. They know that Walsall are top of the league and something we're doing obviously doing something right. Um, does that mean that their approach might be a bit different? Might you find that the opposition could be a bit more defensive? I think it depends who you play against. Like when we played against Wigan, it was nice and open game. Mm. Both teams tried to play. Mm. It didn't matter if we are above them or not. But when we played here against Crew. That was just like the one we traffic and we uh, ended up drawing, do you know what I mean? So that was a bit frustrating, but they just literally sat in front uh, of their own uh, Aiden Yacht box and uh, it was tough to break them down, do you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, you probably will get games like that. That's when you need a bit of magic in it and also uh, something like that, but we just didn't have that that game. Mm -hmm. Which, uh, But then again, we reacted and won yeah. on a Tuesday. Milan talks about the different types of opponents. Chesterfield next up. They've lost four of their last five, but we've seen already, as, as Milan says mm -hmm. down here, there's no easy game in this division. No, you, you bang on. And, and like you say, we know it's going to be another tough game. So... And as well, there's like you just mentioned, there's the added thing of we're top of the table yeah. now, so we're we're to be shot at, um, and with that comes sort of you know a little bit of expectation, and it's something that you know we have to deal with as players, and it's something that we should thrive on. Um, so yeah, Chesterfield will come here and sort of you know be looking for a scout, um, mm -hmm. and it's up to us to to make sure they don't get it. So, mm -hmm. we'll, but we'll just approach it the same way we approach every game. Nothing changes wherever we are in the league. Um, you know, we'll do the work in the week training, work on work on them, work on strengths and weaknesses mm -hmm. and what we can exploit. Um, and we'll go into the game, obviously, full of confidence. I'm going to come on to a few fans' questions here. So I think to both of you, this one, this is from Jack William Tolbert. He says, do you think realistically we can stay at the top and challenge for top spot this season? So either of you can answer that one. Yeah, so Absolutely. Well, there's no reason why not. Like mm -hmm. I said, for, for me this year, it is a wide open league. Um, and bar the likes of probably Wigan and, and, and Sheffield that you'd expect to be up there. Apart from that, it's, it's anybody's game. So it's just about consistency and, and keeping your performance levels high, keeping obviously the results ticking over. And, and there's no reason why we can't be one of the teams you know, in the mix at the end of the season. We've proved already that you know, we're, we're top of the table after yeah. 12 games. So we've proved already that we can do it. Mm. You know, just we just need to maintain it, yeah, yeah. consistency. Second question from Luke Parker. He says, who is the worst dressed player in the squad and what do they wear? I mean, I'm, gonna, I'm not looking at you for any particular reason, know, but man. you can answer this one. Mm. What do you think? You can't <laughs> see my dressed, pants, man. Worst dressed player. Uh, I'll leave that to you. You man. had a pretty rascal T-shirt on the other day that I remember seeing. You. It, it, uh, just me and Benzema wear that mm. one. So. Right. <laughs> um, uh, let's think. Uh, Tails gives me a stick for one of my pants that I wear. <laughs> Uh, it's a nice pants. Yeah, yeah, but they are nice. nice yeah, pants, depends yeah. how you mean it though. But the worst dress sense, I would, I would maybe go for um, Kyle Rowley. Yeah, but I'm not too sure. Uh, Why have you seen him in? Why have you seen, seen anybody? Uh, else? He's in the other changing room. Yeah, he's in. Well, what about the yours? Who's in? Not badly dressed bunch. No, there's not no, bad. Nothing too out there. Who's in? Yeah. You look like you. In ours, okay. I seen in my change room, Kyle. Okay. Kyle, yeah. Okay. I'd probably say Adam Chambers just because it'll annoy him. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no reason. Very good. Very good. Next question from Michael Murray. He says, I've noticed some players wearing uh, retro boots, including Milan. What are your favourite boots of all time and why? Uh, Nike Total 90s, which they've actually colours. stopped. What colours? Oh, colours. Uh, so I had white and gold ones that were... Yeah, no, there was, there was like... there was. Uh, Sort of navy blue and like the early total nineties okay. ones, yeah. navy blue and white. I think they were, but I've always worn total nineties my yeah. whole career yeah. until like two years ago when Nike stopped Stop making them. Up. So not particularly happy with Nike at the no. minute, but nothing yeah. much I can do really. <laughs> so yeah, total nineties for me. You can get the old total nineties. Yeah, yeah but you, is it vapors that you're now wearing? That are yeah, the there? old retro. Things vapors, magistas yeah. now instead of total nineties. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're really um, comfortable as well. They're the ones. Yeah, yeah. OK, uh, next question is from Mark Robinson to both you. Is this the best team that you've played in? You've played in some good teams, which is Chelsea, of course, some good sides uh, in League One and above. But is this one, or at least one of the best teams that you've played in? Yeah, definitely one of. Um, it's difficult to say because, yeah. obviously, the, like you say, you played in lots of different teams and in, in diff at different levels. So um, it's definitely, for me, that the tightest, the tightest squad Mm. And the, the, sort the of, camaraderie, yeah, the best sort of yeah. team spirit for me. Um, like you come in uh, every day and it's a fun. Yeah, yeah every day. Is, every I get that impression good. when we come yeah. on media it's days on Thursday mornings. It seems like a nice environment to come to work yeah. in every day. But even, I mean, sort of everybody's pulling together in mm. the right direction, and that is the best for me. It's the best 
I've experienced in that. The fact that maybe somebody somebody might get left out of the team and you know they may sulk for a little bit, but yeah. then ten minutes later they're sort of saying good luck to the guy that's yeah. replacing him, and you know that's brilliant and that sort of breeds success and that's that's the way it needs to be. And in the past I've been at clubs where you know somebody somebody will get left out of the team or not be happy with something, and you yeah. know you won't see him for two or three days. So for me, it's, it's <laughs> the, it, yeah, serious. It's the it's the best sort yeah. of. Squad mentality, which, which, I've, is, I've unheard of, which is unheard of. At, yeah. At Walsall, yeah, exactly. Um, final quick question then, although time's running out. Um, what are your favourite things to do outside of football? Asks Luke Peach. So, what do you get up to in your spare time? Apart um, from going for steak restaurant and sushi and sushi. Yeah, um, PS4, me. Right. Uh, PlayStation football games. Manager as well. Football manager. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to uh, learn how to play golf. <laughs> the boys, the boys took me to the driving range. Okay. Yeah. I nearly, who, who, who took you to the range? Uh, Jordan, Cole, Kieran, okay. and Fordy. Um, I was facing this way. I tried to hit the ball. Fordy behind me. I nearly hit him with the ball. Which is, I don't know how. Uh, so yeah, but uh, something Sounds. like that. Um, I, well, I've got two young kids, so they keep me very, very busy. Yeah. Um, when I do get a spare couple hours, I love a game of golf. Um, and we've got quite a good golf school here at the minute, so I do enjoy that. But yeah, young kids keep you very, very busy. <laughs> Fantastic insight, fellas. Thanks for coming on today. Nice. That's all we've got time for here on Sadler's TV. Join us next time. We'll bring you more of an insight into Warsaw Football Club.